So my lesson today was about Central and South America culture and history. When I showed them this picture, I said something that was very, uh, it was a very big promise to fill. I basically said that I was going to blow their mind. Now that happened for a good chunk, like a surprising chunk of the kids, especially in one of my classes, they were all blown away. It was like one of those scenes from the Kingsman at the end where all their heads explode. It was kind of like that, which was awesome as a teacher. So we were focusing on three of these groups. We were looking at the Maya, the Aztec, and the Inca. Now we see the Maya in the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, they were around approximately from 250 BC to about 900 AD. So they lasted quite a while, about approximately, and it really depends, these numbers really depend, but according to this from a textbook, so we all know how accurate textbooks can be, but according to this, it says that they were around for approximately 1,150 years, and they ended around the year 900. The Inca, the Inca in the Andes of Western South America, they started around 1438. So that's a 500 year difference between when the Maya ended and the Inca happened. And then we are 500 years after the Inca. So we think, I think, I'm, I'm gonna speak for myself, I automatically think, oh yeah, the Maya, the Aztec, the Inca, yeah, they were way back when. And I always think of them not as a homogenous group, I know that they're different, but I never truly understood how many years were between these groups. Uh, because basically what this is, is the Maya, and then they end, and then a 500 year gap, and then the Inca, and then they're around, and then they end, and then a 500 year gap, and then us. Now the kids went a little step further and they were like, oh, it's a pattern. Every 500 years is like a civilization. Well, no, not that's not the point. My point is that there is a significant chunk of time between these two groups that we lump together. Obviously, they were on different continents. Um, they pretty much had nothing in common. I'm sure you could argue that they do, but I mean, really, there's 500 years between those groups. So I really wanted them to, to put this into perspective because our idea of time is messed up, especially when we're studying history. That being said, I can only speak for learning it in America. Perhaps it's different elsewhere. And perhaps teachers teach it differently. But throughout my college and high school and elementary and middle school and everything, I learned of history as more of a, a linear thing and as a topic. So we learn the names and dates of World War II. And we learn the dates, names and dates of the Civil Rights Movement. And we learn the names and dates of the Civil War. Not taking into account all the other things happening simultaneously. That is lacking. And that's very, very important. So after I showed them this, having them understand that there's a 500 year gap, I gave them some other statistics. I said, would you believe me? If I said that Martin Luther King Jr. was born in the same year as Anne Frank, they all said no. The reason why is because we think, okay, Anne Frank died during World War II, so that's in the 1940s. And then we're like, okay, Martin Luther King, he's civil rights movement, so he's from the 1960s. So that's what we think. We think of it as two separate things. But when I Google it, because I know you don't trust me, when I Google it, I can show you, look, Martin Luther King Jr., 1929, and Frank, 1929. That blew those kids' mind. And that's a good thing. But the, but the sad thing is we shouldn't be, I mean, I totally understand why we learn about World War I by itself, why we learn about World War II by itself. I understand why these are separate events. But it makes it a lot more interesting when you take into consideration what other things are happening at the same time. Now, here's another one that's kind of crazy. We think of Cleopatra as this ancient Egyptian. And we think of ancient Egypt as being the pyramids. Putting, you know, two and two together, we're going to say, okay, Cleopatra 
was probably around the time that they made the pyramids. Well, doing a quick Google search, the pyramids of Giza were made, they were opened, let's put it that way, approximately 2,500 years ago. Cleopatra was born over 2,000 years later. She was born in 69 BC. So let's just round up. Or, yeah, let's just round, I guess. So let's say that she was born 2,500 years after the Pyramids of Giza, which means that she is closer to our year than she was to the pyramids. That's crazy. So we, I don't even know how to fix this problem. I mean, I really have no idea. But the timelines are so interesting to see because we see timelines all the time. Okay, World War II, for America, our entry was December 7, 1941 with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. I mean, that you could say that's what started it all. You could argue a lot of other things, but but if we make it simple, yeah, December 7, 1941. But we don't take into consideration all the other stuff that was happen happening simultaneously, which I think is just absolutely fascinating stuff. So, I don't know, just think about that as um, a different way of looking at things. Our idea and perspective of what time is, is really messed up. So, next time you're studying history, just think about um, what else was happening at this time. Because there's probably more stuff that, that would put it into perspective a little bit and uh, might blow your mind. Thanks for watching.